The Oshkosh Senior Center presents Senior Savvy. Hi, welcome to Senior Savvy. I'm Jane Wells, your host for today's show. Senior Savvy is brought to you by the Oshkosh Senior Center, where it's our mission to enrich the quality of life for adults ages 50 and older. And today on my show, I am so glad to have this person here. Um, I would like to introduce Chris Armstrong, who is our new volunteer coordinator at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> it's good to be here. Thank you. And not only because of filling the position, which is a relief, of course, for me, um, but also because of you just as a person, because oh. you and I have met before. So I'm yeah. um, excited to have you on board, Chris. Thank you. So when you come on, we kind of grill you a little bit at first. So <clears throat> be nice. give us the goods. <laughs> tell it, tell me. Tell like, me. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, please. OK. Um, well, we have met before, mm -hmm. you and I graduated from the same high school class. Yes, we, we won't. Did. We won't give away numbers. We won't say <laughs> when that was. Um, but we were in high school, and that is happens to be where I met my now husband of, oh gosh, I better do the math right, um, 28 years. But we dated for about sure. six prior to that, so we're into our 30-something-ish year. Uh, so, and we have three children. Um, I have my oldest daughter is in St. Louis. I have mm -hmm. a middle child who is in Nina, and my youngest boy is at West Point Military Academy, uh, and has he's in his third year, and they call that the cow year, mm -hmm. which is unusual. I mean, so when people ask me what year he's in, it's like plebe, yuck, cow, and then firsty. So it's a little okay, different. So it's no freshman, sophomore, junior, senior no, stuff. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, so I have the three th the three kids, mm -hmm. and then. Um, I stayed home with them for about 10 years, and I did a lot of work with them through the schools. Mm -hmm. And then I went out and got myself a paying job, which hey, hey. was sort of what eventually led me here. Mm -hmm. So how much do you want to know about that? <laughs> well, we can maybe talk a little bit more about that later. But okay. I do want to touch on something you brought up, is the okay. fact that you and I did go to the same high school together, and so I dug out my yearbook. And okay. <laughs> I have just a couple of pictures to show from the good old days. So if you look uh, on the screen, oh the one gosh. with the arrow pointing oh at you as a cheerleader. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. That's right. And in all fairness, I did put one of myself in, in the uh, conservation club. And my, what I realized as oh I was going gosh. through my yearbook is my children have gone through it and have circled pictures that I'm in. So they were kind enough to have circled me in that photo. Isn't that cute? Did they oh, make fun of you? Um, oh, of course. And so here we are at, must be a homecoming <gasps> oh game or something. Oh, my dad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was. You, that you was know the, and then there, we are. there we are. Both of us are our high school graduation photos. Da 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 da. Oh, how funny. And we're mirror images of each other, aren't I know, we? Isn't that funny? <laughs> We haven't changed it all. Of course, you know, I'm uh, sporting that fair faucet here, do thing with the little curl all the way down the side. My mom wouldn't let me have long hair then, so I couldn't do that. So I'm jealous. <laughs> so we date ourselves by just saying the fair faucet thing, Charlie Angels, you know. Oh, gosh. That's just a clue. Okay. That mm. is a clue. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, That's too, right. won't we? Okay. So um, initially, what actually brought you into the... Oshkosh Senior Center was an ad that I had out on Volunteer Match, wasn't right, it? Right, right. Yeah. I have reached a point where my parents were uh, in the in the assisted living capacity. My mm -hmm. dad had Alzheimer's, mom had dementia. Um, they both recently passed, and so the last two years or so has really been spent trying to finalize their years mm -hmm. and, and keep our relationship real strong and keep them well as well as we could. So once they passed, I needed to reinitialize myself right. and get back out into the world. And I didn't, I'm very much a value focused person mm -hmm. uh, where I'm not, it's not about the corporate life anymore. Right. Um, as experiences share, are shared throughout your mm -hmm. years, your values shift and they change a little bit and right. certain ones come out and stand out more. Mm -hmm. So my need was to get back into the community, to get back somewhere and give back because mm -hmm. I had had a very, um, a really good, I'll call it just a very benign life. I have no major 
hardships and all mm -hmm. of that, and I have the ability to come back and right. give people right. what they need. So anyway, I went out on <coughs> volunteer match and I queried it for mm -hmm. local areas, and the Oshkosh Senior Center came up, and it was for exercise and fitness. Mm -hmm. And I happened to have been a fitness instructor sure. years sure. ago. Years ago, I will say that again, um, because recently I yes, did do exactly, a little stint of an exactly. exercise instruction. Um, but I, I really came in. I saw you, mm -hmm. but I didn't know you by your married name. Sure, exactly. So you come out from behind the, the office and say, "I know you," and I said, "I know you," <laughs> and a new yes, friendship came exactly. out of it, which was really great. Yes. Um, but you introduced me to a lot of activities here that mm -hmm. are extraordinary and have a really strong volunteer presence. Yes. And I was really happy to come on board with that as a volunteer at that point. Right, and um, it was fun just to reconnect and, and all that. Um, but to have your energy um, in the place is fun too. I do want to just go back a little bit to um, mm -hmm. your parents because mm -hmm. you know that is such a difficult time when your parents go into a living situation and, and roles really, really change. Oh, they shift. They and shift. Um, so many people our age are going through that experience where you know you have children that you're still caring for, mm -hmm. and then you suddenly become the caregiver for your parents. Right. And so that we could probably do a whole show on that. Oh my gosh, you could. And um, and how the effects that it has on you emotionally and physically. Yep. And like you said, just a major shift um, in terms of what you end up valuing, what you choose to do with your time. Right. Um, but I would imagine that once the caregiving stops, there's a big void because. That can be all-consuming. It is all-consuming. Yes. Uh, my parents were lucky enough to have been moved together to mm -hmm. a facility, the Valley VNA uh, mm -hmm. in Nina, where they have the memory care unit. They also have another area for assisted living for those that are able to sort of care for themselves yet. Mm -hmm. So they were able to be together. So the trip from my home, from work, or from wherever I was coming from was only a one-stop and I could always nice. see both of them together. Right, right. We had full access to seeing them, but once they're gone, now I drive by and I'm thinking, wait, I should. Somewhere in your mind you're like, oh, I, wait, I'm I need to, to stop. stop. But, but I don't have that. And right. so what's really interesting is we just sold their home this mm. last month, and so there's a closing this coming month in November. But we went through and, and kind of really closed out that house. Mm. And there are still blankets and, and things that are there that sure. have that smell. Yes. And so the smell mm -hmm. becomes that thing. Right. It's not about any monetary estate. Right. It's right. not about that physical house. Mm -hmm. You can make a home right. anywhere. Right. It's the smell and the, the, the mm -hmm. things that they wore. I have my mom's, um, she wanted a West Point hat, but she wanted it to be pink. So I got her a little West Point hat, mm -hmm. and that was one that she wore all the time, and that now sits in my daughter's sure. room. But it has the smell of yep. my mom exactly. on it. Exactly. And so that those are the things that become important. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. So now that, and I know we'll get to this a little later, but now that we are well, because we've graduated from high school so long ago, <laughs> years, we're getting into that realm. Yes. And so it forces me to think, what do I want my kids to remember? What do mm -hmm. I want to leave behind? What memories for others? What activities right. to others, for others, and because of others do I want to provide and leave behind? Right. And so the Oshkosh Senior Center fits in beautifully with that it really vision does. for me. Mm -hmm. It really does. And especially in working with the volunteers, because um, you have the value of being on both sides, um, having been a volunteer yourself. Um, so you know what you're looking for from a volunteer experience and the things that make you feel good about it and the things that make you want to come back. And now, of course, now you're going to have the other role of creating opportunities and trying to match talents and skills with what's available and meet needs and and mm -hmm. all of that other interwoven stuff that goes right. on within the program. Right. So, um, you know, having been the volunteer coordinator, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think I know, you know, kind of where you're at. But um, you bring so many skills and talents. I'm I'm excited to watch what you do with oh, it. Boy. 
and the way you know the ways in which you put your own personal touch to it as we all do yeah and so. I think when you and I had talked um, when I was on the other side as mm -hmm. a volunteer mm -hmm. understanding how to fit that passion mm -hmm. and the skills and the expertise to a role that is needed here right. is right. so important right. when you mismatch someone or if they think that they can just come in and just do whatever right they become disappointed or the time commitment is too much or right. their expertise isn't quite mm -hmm. where it needs to be uh, we need extraordinary individuals at the reception desk correct those folks need to be available to, to know the computer to be mm -hmm. not irritated by phone calls which some some right. individuals right. oh that phone we need them to embrace that right. and be happy and content and smiling and mm -hmm. uh, resourceful with their ability to say wait a minute I don't know that answer but I can find it really right. quickly right. so that is a very skilled position right we need uh, food servers and mm -hmm. we need uh, individuals to bust those tables or to help right. individuals carry their food who have walkers or canes are, are, exactly. are unable. So that doesn't require great academic skill, but it right. takes social and networking and respectful skill. Right, and, exactly. Um, so those are the things that we're trying right. to understand. That's the one thing that I think is of such great value at the center is that there's all different kinds of opportunities from somebody who wants you know a regular commitment I know that every Tuesday afternoon this is what I do boom right um, to newsletter folding which um, you oh. just get to go through your first experience Amazing. of newsletter folding I mean we send thousands of those newsletters out into the mm -hmm. community those are all put together and collated by volunteers and then um, packed up into delivery routes and then somebody comes and picks up their little bag and goes to all these different hundreds of businesses throughout the community to deliver these newsletters um, it's an amazing process. Oh, the experience. Um, I'm still thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I remember, I watched, we have how many tables? It's five tables deep, mm -hmm. length of a conference room. Right. And there are two women chatting, not looking down at all. Yep. Da, 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 yep. And they were collating right. because they were so in such a rhythm yep. and it was an amazing process. Mm -hmm. And they are a self driven yes. process. Yes. They've been doing it. They're waiting every yep. third Thursday or Wednesday of the month or exactly. whatever that is. Exactly. Boom, they're in, done, yep. and it was yep. beautiful. So unbelievable. Like I said, you know, that's the neat thing is there's so many different opportunities. And if somebody um, doesn't know how to do something, you know, we're all about teaching and, and helping them to learn the new skills and things like that. Yep. So you've been in the position for how long? A month? Three, three weeks, weeks to a month, yep, yep. yep. Okay, very short amount yes. of time. Yes, um, you know, and, and so it is hard a little bit at first to get to know people and understand who does what, and it feels like everybody else knows what's going on and you feel a little out of the Disconnected loop. Disconnected at yeah. this point, yeah. 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 But it's it's really, a, um, it's a puzzle. Mm -hmm. I love puzzles, so very we're good. okay. Very good, And yes. everyone here, though, as far as staff goes, mm -hmm. wonderful really a, a, truly enjoy each other's company too mm -hmm. I mean they everyone mm -hmm. gets along extremely well there isn't um, yeah I'll just keep that in my own <laughs> mind other 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 areas of the community of, as far as corporate worlds and the politics there are politics this is the city of Oshkosh but mm -hmm. it's not right. at all to a competitive level. Right. This is very much what is in the best needs mm -hmm. of the community, of the senior center, of all of us put together, and that's the competition. Right. Let's strive to get the right. best programming out there. Let's right. get the best volunteers out there. Let's right. put those activities that enrich the lives, and that's mm -hmm. the competitive set. Very different from um, <coughs> other organizations. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, wonderful, wonderful. Um, co-workers. So if somebody is perhaps interested in volunteering, um, how do they reach you? <laughs> they call you. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. We, we finally did get that voicemail yes. set up. Yes. Um, I am part-time. Mm -hmm. I am trying to maintain a similar schedule as what you had done oh, yep. previous, but I will mix it up on occasion depending on the needs of the, of the um, Senior Center. Mm -hmm. uh, Mondays, Wednesdays mostly full days mm -hmm. and then Thursday would be maybe about a half day ish. Mm -hmm. I will switch that out on Tuesdays and on Fridays so that sure. I get to reach yep. out to all groups. Mm -hmm. If there are activities over the weekend that mm -hmm. will dictate my, my week but I will leave an out of office and my email I believe is up on this on a slide. 
here? Uh, my, your phone number will be um, okay. up there. Okay. Um, but I do have voicemail, so if mm -hmm. anyone wants to call, 232 right. 306? Exactly, Yay. correct. Um, and Or by, by email as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so if anyone wants to reach me, my I have an out of office when I'm not there indicating sure. the hours that I will be in that week. Sure. And I do my best to get back to someone immediately. But as I've learned last week, it doesn't always work as efficiently as I'd like, but mm -hmm. I will try to have some de designated time to sure. really get back to those people that I need to get back to. Right, and your office is in the North Building. You have a mighty Correct. fine office, I might I say. I do. It's been painted really beautifully. So, yes, I do. I have a nice Glad office in the North Building. I can do that for building. you. I'm right behind <laughs> the leave. reception <laughs> desk. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, when you think of the volunteer program at OSC and the future and where it all might go, um, you know, we've had these discussions, but share a little bit about what some of your thoughts are. And oh boy, I you know the the base, the volunteer base at this point is really big. Mm -hmm. There there are a lot of individuals, and thankfully, I've gotten in a lot of applications so far for the um, to grow that pool. Mm -hmm. um, and and we have talked about this a little bit. On mm -hmm. What does that? What does being a volunteer mean currently to right. our generation? Mm -hmm. So if, right, and again, we're going to cover that age group, but anyway, the younger of the senior set, and, and the Oshkosh Senior Center starts at age 50. <laughs> so I know. <coughs> so what does that mean right. to 50-year-olds? Right. Most exactly. are working. Um, right. Some might be in an early retirement. Mm -hmm. So what do they need? Right. Does that mean a one hour per month? per year, per day, per what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And for those on the other extreme who are just simply wanting to get out of the house and really have right. all kinds of flexibility, are you a snowbird so you're only available from May to November? Right, exactly, exactly. So. Um, and just what amazes me is the talent and the um, can-do attitude that our volunteers come yeah. in with. Yeah. They're willing to do anything, they really but are. I really yep. want them to be happy yep. with where they are placed yep. and where they are suited and um, mm -hmm. what best meets their availability. I don't want anyone to say, you know what, I don't get up until noon and I'm asking <laughs> them to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right, exactly. Or if they're up at 4.30, we don't want that yet either because right. I'm not really ready right. <laughs> no, in exactly. the morning. <laughs> exactly. So, so again, if somebody is interested in volunteering, um, either come and visit you in the north office. Correct. Um, or they can Give reach you at 232-5306. Or and what is my email? C it is Armstrong correct. at ci dot Oshkosh yep. dot wi yep. dot dot US. US. Exactly. Oh gosh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. And so oh, um, as we think about growth, not only with the volunteers and you know how what new programs we want to offer, so then what skills would we be looking for and things like that, and we talk then about you know what the participants need and want and things like that, and some of the things that have come up is food and food preparation and things like that, and so um, in my new job as activities coordinator, I'm looking a lot more at that, and so I was out on YouTube just kind of surfing to see what kind of videos were out there, and I came across this woman who is very creative, to say, to say the least, in how she prepares food. Um, I think she's in um, a living situation where she doesn't have the full kitchen, so she has made some accommodations. <laughs> and I just chuckled as I saw this, and I thought that perhaps our viewers might enjoy seeing this as well. Oh, like but that. just food for thought for in the future. So um, this um, gal is called Shura, and the little segment is called Cooking with Shura. So let's, let's take a peek at her little Let's get educated, cooking, right? Yes, yes her, right. her cooking tips. <laughs> Oh, hi everybody on YouTube. My name is Shora, and um, uh, I'm, I'm here to show you how I have my lunch quite often. My microwave I'm afraid of, so I don't use it at all. But I love corn on the cob, and this is the right size to cook corn in. Sometimes I hard-boiled eggs in here. Oh yes, I'm going to make you grilled cheese sandwiches too. Now this is lovely corn. I should have put somebody else to work, but anyway. Okay, now we've got to wait for five minutes, but I might as well get the cheese sandwich started. Okay, now which is the hottest? 
polyester, nylon, cotton. And in the meantime, ooh, yep, it's getting nice and hot. There, I heat up the bottom just to hasten things. Now, come on, cheese, start melting. There. Ooh. I'm going to turn this over. Ooh. Now, I do have little baby tomatoes in the refrigerator. And here's the little sandwich. See? <laughs> oh, oh, um, okay. I'll say goodbye now while I answer the telephone. All right, I've said goodbye to my phone caller. Well, I guess that little cooking lesson is over for now. You've got an idea. Well, uh, you forgot the corn. corn. Eh? Hey? The corn. Oh, the corn! Hey, come here, corn. These are ideas for your university dorm or a retirement residence or and <laughs> Even if you live in a boarding house, I don't know if people have boarding houses anymore. A, a new thought, hamburgers, or not hamburgers, hot dogs. Yes. So um, the hot dogs, of course, could be done in the coffee pot too. And uh, that's the end of my repertoire for today. Bon appetit. <laughs> oh, I'm so warm now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. I know that I laughed, even again, seeing it again. Um, while I can't condone cooking with an iron, I think her creativity and her ingenuity is something that we all want to strive for. So here's my challenge to you. If you have a different way to cook that's creative or outside the box or a different way of doing something else that's outside the box, give me a call um, and we'll see if we can come and film it and shoot it and who knows, maybe you'll become the YouTube sensation that sure is. So, thanks. <laughs> All right, oh, Chris. Well, we had oh, mentioned. That was funny. Isn't it funny? That's so cute. It is. Boy, the little corn. You know, I remember the college days, though. Those little um, those we called them pots. hot pots. Yes, yeah. exactly. Kind of the same thing. Mac and cheese all the time in there. Right. Yeah. Oh. So, so she's doing the same thing, just a little different. So yeah, now with fire codes. Although so I was going to say, I don't think I ever took my iron to make the grilled cheese sandwich. But hey, you probably didn't even have an iron, did you? No, probably don't really now either. I don't either. think <laughs> I did either. So anyway, good for her. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. let's talk about being old enough to come to the Oshkosh Senior Center because I know that at first when I was applying for the position I thought oh my gosh 50 and older oh, really no way right. but then as I opened up the current and read through it I'm like well I would like to do that that mm -hmm. that and that right and so well yeah. I had the same I had mm -hmm. the same reaction you told me that this here at the Senior Center we're open to those individuals 50 and older and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I was stunned I'm like wait a minute I I'm not a senior yet. Right. Well, if you think back when we were in high school or, or whatever and you heard of someone that was 50, we thought that was extraordinary, I right? I know. You get to be closer to that age and it becomes that less extraordinary. So old, that's it. And now that I've, I've watched my parents mm -hmm. age and, and are deceased, and I still have my in laws, thank goodness, yes. but I'm watching what they could potentially use and need and what they did when they were in their 50s. So now it, it's starting to all come together thinking, if I'm 50 right. and wanting to use a senior center, what is that that what does it mean to me? Right. And it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And we mm -hmm. have, you know, from the arts and crafts to right. the cooking to the woodworking to the exercise and fitness center, which exactly. is so underutilized. Um, all of those things that, that hit all of the scopes right. Right. of, and if you want me to say, the seven dimensions of wellness. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the spiritual, the emotional, intellectual, computer classes. Mm -hmm. Right. Every single thing that you could need is here. Right. And I think people misjudge what senior yes, center means. I would means. agree. I would agree. Because I've even encountered people who are in their, <laughs> their 70s, late 70s or whatever, and they say, I'm too young for a senior mm -hmm. center. Um, I would just encourage people to come in and check it out because it exactly. is not, like you said, it, it's not what you think of um, when you think of senior center. We're really not an activity center. Right. So along those same lines, we do have 
very um, cool programming coming up in November. And so I'd like to highlight some of the things that we have coming up and share that with our viewers. Okay. So um, first of all, we have, um, if you are ever curious about some of the events and things that we have coming up, they all are listed in The Current, which is our newsletter, which is available at hundreds of businesses throughout the community. It's also available online at the city's website. Mm -hmm. Just go down to Senior Services and you can find it there. So um, coming up first, we have our Veterans Day celebration, which will be Monday, November 11th at 7.45 a.m. And that's going to be in the North Building. Registration is required. We need to know how many people are coming so that we have enough food. And this is free to the veterans and a guest, but it is required that you do register for the event. And we ask that you do that by Wednesday, November 6th. So we also have coming up the Holiday Parade and Decorating. So um, this is going to be my first holiday parade. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it is in on Thursday, November 14th, around 6-ish, and right. we'll say 6-ish six, six depending on, upon who else has entered into the parade. Right. Uh, call Ka Kathy Snell, and um, you can come over here and decorate uh, for the holidays on the 15th at, two at 1230 in the afternoon at either building. Right, so we will be decorating both buildings, so we need a crew in the north and we need a crew in the south, so please come on down and help us decorate. So uh, I'm going to let you talk about the next oh, one. Snack and chat. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is a, a nice opportunity for me <coughs> to get to know all of you who want to volunteer, who have volunteered, uh, get caught up on some upcoming activities where I could use some help and enlisted in your help. Uh, perhaps have you volunteer to self guide or direct something? You can. We can chat. I will bring pie. So that is in the Oasis Room South Building on the 14th from 115 to 215. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Right, and the next thing about that is um, sometimes volunteers who, who do X and somebody does Z, they never encounter each other. No. So this is a great chance to meet other people who are volunteering but that you just don't happen to run into in your course of right. volunteering. Right, right. Exactly. Um, and then we have our choral concert, which is going to be on um, December 1st. And I just wanted to mention that one because as we start to get stuff on our holiday calendars and they get full fairly fast. This is the Oshkosh Senior Center Choral. Um, a choral concert and it will be a holiday concert and it's going to be in the North Building. Everyone is welcome. We just passed the hat um, and there will be refreshments following the concert. So again that is on December 1st and I went a little bit out of order there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we also have one more oh. thing. Uh, okay, estate planning on November 15th at 10 a.m. Uh, that is at the Oshkosh Senior Center South Building, the Valley VNA and Lutheran Homes of Oshkosh will be participating in that discussion. So, um, that that knowing that we just went through a little bit of that oh, ourselves sure. is exactly. a really critical um, and vital thing for 50s and 60s yes. uh, to go through while you're still with it and still right. okay. Right. I'd like to go back to the Veterans Day celebration mm -hmm. just a little bit mm -hmm. because you have a son in, in the military, Correct. right? So yeah, yeah. Um, you shared a little bit about um, looking at the flag and what does it mean to you now compared oh, to gosh. prior. Uh, when my son entered into West Point Military Academy, the impact of what that meant mm -hmm. didn't hit me until he had to accept his role there, and, and it's very ceremonial and very, Ooh. it's full of pomp and circumstance. Sure. Um, but every time you hear, uh, God bless America, or right. any of those beautiful mm -hmm. songs, and it is it Lee Greenwood? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yep. that it just sends chills through my, exactly. my, through my spine now. Well, I'm anxious for you to see mm, the, very the whole Veterans Celebration because it brought me to tears last year, and it really is a day to honor um, people who have served our country right. and um, it's just a very neat experience to be a part of so it will have extra meaning to you too because yes. of having a son in the military yes it, it is it's really a, it's a vital and critical piece to me now in Memorial Day as well so I, yes. I don't understand where families are who have lost someone to past wars right. but well, Gosh. thank you so much, Chris, for coming on. I am thrilled to have you on board. You. Um, your, your energy and enthusiasm is wonderful. And thanks for coming on Senior Savvy. I appreciate oh. that, too. It's been fun. And, thank you. And I look forward to working with you. Me, too. All right, great. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching Senior Savvy and for listening on WOCT Radio, too. Bye-bye. <laughs>